Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the personal collection. Have all my good friends here, Paul. I learn from Paul all the time when we message on Twitter and Instagram. You can find them at Boomer2420. And today we have a special PC because we're going to be taking a look at pre-war football cards. That is right. So people know some pre-war cards. Obviously, they had the Mayos in the 1800s for football, the first collegiate set. Then you had Gaudi in 33, which had a few players. Then you had the Diamond Chickle set in 35. But Paul has a bunch of different cards that you might not have seen before. So I'm super excited to have him on the channel in this episode. Hey, man, welcome. Yeah, this will be fun. I appreciate the flattery, but if this is a one-way learning, no. I I watched the videos long before I knew who you were. I, I don't know if uh, you remember this, but I remember running into you at the Wisconsin show, and, and, and my first thought was, who's this young kid with, like, the camera and stuff? He probably doesn't know a thing. Whoops, that's wrong. <laughs> like, you'd, be, you'd be surprised, man. Like there's 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 dealers that I've talked to and they're like, yeah, you know, I wanna I want to take advantage of all the kids with the cameras, but I can't take advantage of you because you actually know the cards. That is true. Yeah, no, I had that last week and uh somebody's like, Hey, that you know, this guy's in the mid uh 30s, I can hit him on some uh vintage football. I'm like, no, uh, uh this is my specialty area. Like I, I know the stuff more than you do. Sorry, you're not getting 20% of the price from me, but no, yeah, uh, vintage football, it's super fun because you don't have to know like a thousand sets like you have to know in the other sports. Um, got the chick, let's see here. You got the chickle set. Try and get the camera right here. You, um, you get the chickle set, there's, I don't know, five, six, seven Hall of Famers in there. Um, you got Hinkle, Turk Edwards, drawings in that set. Uh, who's the other one? I got that one, Raw. Keep mine separated by Raw and by graded. Battles is in that set. Just basically they're all rookies in there. You just have to hit the Hall of Famers basically. Um, surprised you didn't hit, hit this one when you hit the last, uh, Chicago show. Cause it's actually a baseball set. The, uh, W 527. They were like a 1928, I believe, or 20, I think they're 28 release. Yeah. I'll yeah. be honest with that Chicago show, man. I was in and out because I had a plane that was like five hours after I landed and that line to get in was ridiculous. So I had to hurry up, go. I had to shoot the vlog. Like what a lot of people don't realize is I fly in and out the same days for these shows. And sometimes I have three or four hours on the floor. Plus I have to get B-roll plus I have interviews. So like I'm running like a madman sometimes <laughs> to try to get that stuff, like to be able to record. And then I want to try a local food every time I travel because I really like trying new stuff. And plus Florida's all chains rather than everywhere else where you get to actually try some local cuisine. So I try to jam pack all that into a vlog and to save money, I don't stay overnight a lot of times at the shows and it's chaos. So I don't be, I don't have time to like thoroughly go through every display case or all the value boxes. Sometimes I get the chance to, which is nice. And you can do well at that, but I'm just in a rush. Whatever catches my eye really quick, grab some cards and out. So the most expensive card in that set is the Bronco Nagurski. Now what's the backstory on it? Because obviously he's in the wrestling hall of fame. He's also in the football hall of fame. Is it a short print in the set? Is it just because he's the most iconic figure in the set? I know there's also other iconic figures that were in the 33 Gaudi set that are in the Chickle set, but what's the story? Why is he so expensive? Why are some other ones a little bit on the cheaper side? Um, I'm not sure exactly. I know that some of it's the fan base. Like if you look at the diamond matchbook set, if you grabbed a red Grange, you knew who it was and you held it. Now, if you fast uh, forward, Bill Hewitt, who makes the Hall of Fame long after he's deceased or something like that, uh, you didn't know in 1933 that you should hold that. I believe there's only six or seven of these that are slabbed. I should likely slab this one but 
we'll see. If, we'll see if I stop at the group sub this week and send it in. But some of them just you don't know that you should hold them. And that's why they be, uh, become super uh, valuable because of it. And some of them, it's just like, hey, who is this? And then they get sold off for nothing. Like, it's interesting. But, but yeah, the matchbook set is, I find it super fun. It's about the only option that you have if you want to get some of them under thousands in the Hall of Fame. Like, the Bronco is, if you can find it, he's super scarce in that set, eight, nine hundred. But if you want the Chickle, it's car money. Yeah, it's 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 at least five figures for one because I saw a one with a hole in it. Someone like punched it out at the Dallas card show. And that's a card I really want to get one day. Obviously, I can't afford a $10,000 card. I mean, I'm, I'm flying spirit here, so I can't really afford the type of money. But one day, eventually, I want to get one of those for the PC because at least from what I've heard, and someone correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, but that card used to be the most expensive football card out there in high grade. Um, at one point in time, it was the most expensive out there. Yeah. I mean, outside of like the crazy one of ones, maybe one of the Namath nines, if they were to ever sell, I don't know when the last one not sold, but it's like 06, 07 off my head. But yeah, there are Namath nines out there, but the Browns, I don't know if he has a 10 or not he has a couple nines i know some of his higher end stuff just sold for record a record price i remember seeing a graphic on it like a week or two weeks ago don't remember exactly what it was but people were like holy crap but jim brown going for that but i kind of viewed like the brown as the mickey mantle of football cards at least like when i think of vintage 50s and 60s football like the brown rookie card is what i think of like when i think of baseball 50s or 60s baseball it's the 52 mantle is the first picture and they both are available. They're both not super scarce cards, and they go for a lot of money, even low grades. Although Jim Brown is much, much cheaper than that mantle right now. Yeah. You picked up the better one at the Wisconsin show than what I yes. did. Oh, man. I was so happy Ugh. getting that card. I did not think I was going to grab that at the Wisconsin Bills show. Yeah. You picked up, what, a four or a five? I grabbed a, I grabbed a five in a trade, and that's a, that's yeah. a whole story on that itself. It started with a Carmen Electra refractor card and I worked my way to Jim Brown five. So here, here's, here's the story on the, how that happened. If you, anyone's new to the channel. So last year I, I had some fun trading at shows now. And now I tend to sell a lot of the cards I don't care about rather than trade them. But back then I was trading a lot and I found a Carmen Electra card in a dollar box and they were comping between like 10 and $20 for some reason. I'm like, all right, well, that's a nice 10, $20 card. And this is also the time when the Tiger Woods cards absolutely exploded out of nowhere and they were still in value boxes. So I ended up picking up two Tiger Woods cards and one was a KSA 10 or nine and a half. I don't remember. That was like a, in a 20 or $30 box. I picked up the Carmen Electra for a dollar and then another, um, another Tiger Woods. I don't remember. It was like five, $10, something cheap. Right. And I threw that in a hundred dollars and I got a Bob Gibson rookie card as a four, which like you're static. If you get a Bob Gibson as a four and for some reason, I didn't put it off the side. I brought it to the Wisconsin Dallas show again. I don't know why, because usually I would have just locked that card up, but I was like, ah, I'll bring it to the show. And I ended up trading that I had a 1954 Ted Williams. Um, it was the last card in the set, but I picked that up in Dallas on a trade where I traded some Tatis cards. I found in value boxes for that, plus a little bit of cash. And then I had Jack Johnson, 1948 Leaf, or 1948, 49 Leaf, which I had since I was a kid. So I think I paid $20 for that card a long time ago. <laughs> and it's not a playing day. So I traded those three and $800 cash for a Jim Brown five. So I'm into the Jim Brown five for like maybe $1,200, if that, $1,100. And this was like when they're comping at 2,500, 3,000. Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> that is insane. Yeah, I was just happy I found this. I mean, Hob, you can't really see the flaw on it immediately. It, I can't tell what qualifier does it have. Is it MK or is it OC? Mark. Mark. That's what I thought it said. Mark. The pencil in there, there, but because of where that is, you don't hardly see it. But if you notice the crease, 
going to be hard to show here. Yeah, hard to tell the reflection. Yeah, like, but there's a crease right through the pants area. But the guy wanted uh, 700 for it, and it looks like a five if you first look at it. So, yes, I will grab that all day. So was it a 3MK then, or 2MK? One. One, really? It's actually a serious crease, but you have to hold it on the side to see it. Hey, that's all that matters. Though. It's a lot of people say buy the card, not the gray. Obviously yes. there's two sides of that, like higher end grade wise, they appreciate a lot faster, but if you want to have that card in your collection, you can always start with a one MK or one and just over time slowly upgrade it. And that's the best way to do it sometimes. Like, especially on those type yep. of cards, you're fine with the one you have the Jim Brown rookie. And then you look yep. back in two or three years, you have some more trade bait. You want to upgrade that Brown to a three or four that's centered. You can do that. Ah, speaking about something that you upgrade after the fact, hope, hopefully this can become the Chico later. That's the Bronco. That's a 34. We're considering it the rookie here. Oh, uh, the PC also for ev everyone out there. I collect every Hall of Fame rookie in the NFL. And some of them you have to kind of cheat. But again, it's $100 versus ten thousand dollars and some of them you can't find so now with those match, yeah. match books was it one specific year or did they have releases let's say from all the years in the 30s or how did that work because obviously you said that's a 34 I believe i've seen some that were late 30s as well so how did that work Th uh 33 are all silver and 34 34 and 36 are either red or green, but in 36, they had a different checklist. So you kind of have to figure that one out on your own. Just, you know, hey, this player wasn't in 34. So you can figure out, hey, this is a 36. With the Bronco, I have, it might be a 34. It might be a 36 they look the ex exact same i don't know 35 they can be tan and something else but you you hardly ever see 35s um you more see 34 and 36s when you get down to 37 and 38 they don't it's it's no longer like the nfl they kind of have their their own lit like there's two maybe three uh franchises that are in the set and then once you get in the 40s it's completely um franchise driven like somebody at the local show has a 41 but the packers are only on the set i know that washington has their own set like but yeah the silver ones are the ones that you want because they're 33 and they're rookies uh not that you wouldn't want the other ones but 33s are the ones that you're really searching for so there's the matches then there's also galaxy chickle now i know there's also the dixie lids do you have any examples of that you want to show yeah, you look at the ebay sales history you might know who won one <laughs> yeah the so purchase I on that was uh phenomenal uh by the way he would I he would match up very well with this very well <laughs> I can't believe how cheap it went. I'll be completely honest. I thought it was going to double or triple that price. And I anticipated it. Trivia question for you. Sure. Do you know the only player that's in the baseball and football Hall of Fame? No, baseball and nope. football. Man. Umpire. See, I wouldn't have. I, see, I originally, mm, I wouldn't have thought of umpire. That's a good trick question. Cal Hubbard. There's like six of these. I'm not going to say that it was anything skill wise that I found this. I saw this and my pants were brown. I'm like, wow, I actually found one. Cool. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, a, that's a really good one. I had no idea there was someone in baseball and football. Like my first anticipation was Thorpe, but Thorpe was not in the baseball hall of fame. I don't know. I don't know if he's in football hall of fame or not. Is he? Yes. He yeah. is okay. So, hundred percent football Hall of Fame. He is not in the baseball Hall of Fame because he played for a few years but didn't have Hall of Fame stats. Let I me mean, look up his yeah. baseball stats. Were kind of curious. So let's see. I mean, he was 
fine, but he wasn't a Hall of Famer when you consider all the other Hall of Famers of that era. And when you're a Hall of Famer in like five or six different Hall of Fames, the fact that he's not in seven. Yeah. So yeah, not yeah, yeah, not he had a negative war, batted two fifty two with seven home runs. So definitely not Hall of Fame material baseball wise. But you know, he's in what a hundred different Hall of Fames. The hundred and first is no big deal. Yeah, no. Honestly, at the end of the day, more people know Jim Thorpe than other baseball famers. So it just shows you how good of an athlete he was. Yeah. All right. So let's see here. We got the 30s out of the way. Uh, 40s, they didn't really have a set up until 48. Uh, The Bowman and the Leaf set. Although, if you do want the only way to get a bed Narek under 1,000, mostly under 1,000, Tops actually made a football set. Uh, the magic set. And these are ones where the photos aren't necessarily the easiest uh, to see. Uh, you have to hope that somebody 70 years ago held them up and the light made the photo. So that's why they're the tops magic photos. They're actually really fun because nobody else has them. These are uh, super hard to find but you can find them for basically free because no one knows what they are, but I think they're really fun. Uh, The Doak Walker is a rookie in that set. Also, my photo is not the clearest, but they graded it a four. So kind of like, kind of like the old judges where they just fade over time too. Yeah. Yeah, these have the issue where if 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 you didn't have sunlight on them early, uh, you don't really see the uh, the photo. It's hard to like that photo. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, Bed Derek is pretty solid, but Connor here, uh, first line backer in the NFL. That photo's yeah, so so. But the fact that no one else has it and the fact that I'm into all three or four of them for just over 100, yeah, I like that. I like walking yeah. around and being like, yeah, nobody else has this, and this is super fun. Yeah, and for anyone that doesn't know, that set also has baseball players in there, and there's also boxers as well. I'm trying to think who else. I mean, they had they had everything in that. There was multiple releases. It's actually a large set. Uh, they had over in the tops magic. So uh, that, that could be a whole episode itself on a PC because there's so much to research, so many different players and everything. So do your own research on it, but they're cool. I don't have any yet. I want to get some eventually. There's some on my list, but I'm going after some other PC items. Then after magic, what felt backs or next? I actually for, for, uh, forgot one in, in, in the thirties. Uh, do you know where the Don Hudson rookie is? What set it's actually out of? I do not. Wheaties. This is not a Hudson. This is a Wayne Milner, but super hard to uh, find. This is the only one of Milner that's in a slab, probably because no one else wants this besides me. But the Don Hudson one, you do want in a slab because that's like 500 minimum. But uh, but yeah, they gave this one. Actually, hold on. That wasn't. Were they were they hand cut out of Wheaties boxes or? Yeah, hand cut. I have, a, I have a Gehrig like that. It's a thirty six or thirty eight. Can't remember. It's next to me. Is it thirty seven? Because I have the Arnie Herber also. I grab it. The, the the edges on this are horrendous, and they graded it a three. I have no clue how, but they graded it a three. So there's mine. That's thirty four or five. Oh, okay. Well. Even earlier than that, on the back, it labeled as a 36. I don't know, obviously, grading companies aren't perfect. There's so many cards to the catalog, but also, it, it isn't like they switched over years and then they were like, oh, yeah, this is the new one. Like, they don't know. But yeah, that's the exact. Did they mark this as 36? Yeah, SGC marked this as 36 also. I've seen them marked as 35. So mm-hmm. we don't know. When was the photo when when did uh, somebody scissors it out i mean 
Who cares? There's so many variables, but that's the fun part. Like I picked up that Garrick, I think under $200, which good luck finding any other Garrick card close to that price. Like obviously I want to have a Gaudi. I want to have some of his other strip cards. I think he has one strip. I think it's his rookie card. One of his strip cards in the late twenties. Don't know. Don't know if I'm yeah. the exact one, exact name on top of my head. I know he has a few others as well, but like for 200 bucks, I will take that all day long. Um, so yeah, after the forties, uh, in the 49 set is basically a reprint of the 48 leaf. Um, and there is no other sets in 49 that I know of. Um, but, uh, Bowman in, in the fifties, uh, I mean, I just have them all. I got some of them sitting at the PSA right now, so I don't have technically all of them in my hand, but hey, speed the process up there, there, please. Um, this is one I got. Uh, before the market exploded, uh, Don Hudson eight. Yeah, it's miscut, but no, it's not. It's it's actually off center, but um, I love this. The Packer fan in me, which is ironic because I'm, I'm showing off uh, football items as I wear a shack, you know, while you're uh, being interviewed by someone in Orlando, you know, just correct. put this on. It was still not but gone yeah, one just, magic game. Uh, there's no reason to, there's no reason to, but, uh, but yeah, I started off, um, we first were, uh, uh, when we first had the pandemic, I looked around and said, Hey, you know, I want to watch, uh, sports like everybody else. And I had watched all the nineties football. I lived it. So I'm like, um, you know what, I'm going to go watch eighties football and seventies football and eventually I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to get every Hall of Famer in the rookie set. And some of them, the ones that are uh, the ones that make you maddest are the ones that are like offensive line that you can't find. It's not even like, hey, you know, I have this cash sitting here. No, that's not even the problem. So, yeah, it's just super fun. Like, I mean, I could sit here and show all the vintage uh, football, but... I mean, you can look up the checklist. It's super fun. I'll, I'll be impressed when Dakota decides to uh, share that with everyone because I did most of the work on that. Man. But yeah. Well, I was going to say, I definitely want to have a part two where we see some of your 50s, 60s, and 70s football as well because you can easily talk yeah. about all these different players for quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, like Fran Tarkenton. He's not the sexiest, but if you actually find one, you picked up what, like a five? I picked up a five and a half a while ago. Yeah. Steel. I was like, I think 150 bucks. I can't complain. I picked up, uh, somebody sold me a CGC, CGC, CSG, 5.5 for 135. I'm like. Deals. Um, Accept, accept offer. Well, Thank yeah, you. because like. Those are, those are, they're a short print. They're black border as well. So good luck finding those at high grade. Plus good luck. Also like everyone that has those in high grades are going to keep them. They're not going to sell them. I mean, obviously some make it to the market, but between the short print, the black borders, that is a card to keep. I saw the craziest thing this weekend. Lance Allworth in 63 Fleer and Len. Dawson and 63 Fleer are super hard to uh, find. Somebody put those in a human growth hormone uh, case and they were a 7.5 and an 8.5. I was, um, how does this happen? How does this get sent in here and they're a 7.5 and an 8.5? Like the HGA stuff? Yeah. 7.5 and an 8.5. Well I will, I will, I will say one thing. People use HDA to flood off altered cards. So they know it's altered. They will send it HDA. Yeah. yeah. The guy sold me a 5.5 this weekend. Obviously they do the authentication first, but the reason I got that was because the PSA three that I have, there's a major crease and they missed a big mark on the back. Like really not exactly happy about it. Cause I only got the front, uh, photo and it didn't show the crease so you win some lose some that's all right you got to upgrade anyways yeah. best way people can reach out to you is what twitter and instagram uh 
probably Twitter. Um, if you're on the Discords also, I do have the same name. And you'll see me around the football rooms, um, the vintage rooms. I will help. Um, but if somebody is, it's, if it's a, hey, you know, what's this modern football worth? Like, no idea. I'm doing other stuff. <laughs> and then I was going to say one last thing. What's the best way that you've been able to research this stuff? Because information on the 30s football or 40s football, it's out there, but it's tough to find. Obviously, you did all your research, finding all these players, figuring out what years those. are. What's the best way that you've learned how to gather this information? I think it'll help out people. Uh, look at the sets and then look who's on the checklist of the sets. And it was essentially a, hey, I don't want to spend X amount for the Chickle uh, Bronco. Is there any other options? All right. Well, what's the checklist look look like for these other sets? Oh, he's on there. I, I don't have to spend car money. Yep. That's that's exactly how I got my Dixie lid. I, I knew it was on my radar for a while and I lucked out when I was able to pick that up. I was like, yes, I will grab that card. So yes, that is the that is the best way to get do it, guys. Figure out these sets, do the research and grab the cards you enjoy. You don't always have to go after the five figure cards. You can find a card of a player for a hundred bucks or even a thousand dollars and find enjoyment on the hunt because some of these cards are so tough to find. And when you do, it stays with you forever. So, Hey yep. Paul, thanks again, man. I really appreciate it. And I'm definitely gonna have you on for a part two, where we talk other vintage football, probably fifties through seventies. And that way you can detail some of those other players people don't know about. I appreciate it. I'll no be back. Problem. All right, guys. See you next week on another episode and this time i'm going to be interviewing james beckett